What if I told you that a Japanese fishing trawler dredged up the body of a plesiosaur? I would say maybe they pulled up a body of a plesiosaur. I would say it's definitely a basking shark. I'm Matt. I'm a graduate of Yale Law School, a trial attorney, and a novelist. And I'm Brian. I didn't go to Yale, but I'm an illustrator, book designer, and overall graphic designer. We team up to create books about dinosaurs, monsters, and ancient mysteries. Seriously, we love this stuff. But we don't agree on a lot of it. We are... Let's go back to the year 1977. A Japanese fishing trawler is about 30 miles off the coast of New Zealand in the South Pacific. This fishing trawler, called the Zuyo Maru, really sorry if I mispronounced that, is sounding the depths of the ocean with its giant nets in search of commercial mackerel. When they crank those nets up to the surface, they get a little bit more than they bargain for. It's an enormous blob of something. Like, seriously, it's a giant blob. Uh, maybe a dead whale? But whatever it is, it's definitely been dead a very long time. The captain and the crew know a problem when they see it. This giant hunk of putrid meat could contaminate the rest of their catch. So they immediately start to dump the blob back into the ocean. But in the process of doing that, the blob slipped from the nets and crash landed onto the deck. This allowed the ship's assistant production manager, Michihiko Yano, to get a proper look at it. And what he saw led him to quickly conclude that this was not a whale. Whatever it was, it was something a little bit more astonishing. Now, like I said, the creature was badly decomposed, and they had to get rid of the thing quickly. But Yano had some training in marine biology, so he did his best to take whatever measurements he could in his short amount of time. He also snapped a couple pictures of it as the body was being dragged across the deck. All told... This giant decomposed blob was on the ship for around an hour. Now, don't it always just go to show that you don't know what you got till it's gone? When the Zuyomaro returns to port in Japan, they start to realize what they had there. They had found a literal sea monster. Maybe a plesiosaurus? And they had thrown it away to save some mackerel. But luckily for them, word about it soon spread anyway. Soon, this plesiosaur had become an international phenomenon. Many scientists said that this sea monster was actually probably just a decomposed shark, probably a basking shark. But other scientists weren't so sure. Some even speculated that it might be a plesiosaur. A couple months after the incident, uh, the ship's production manager, Michihiko Yano, decided to make a sketch of what he remembered. Now, this sketch looks nothing like a decomposed basking shark, but it looks a heck of a lot like a plesiosaur. And ever since then, the plesiosaur of the Zuyomaru has been an international sensation. So what do you think, Brian? Is this Zuyomaru monster a plesiosaur, a basking shark, or something else? You know, I'm going to hold my opinion till the end. But first, I'm going to give some points for the positive for it being a plesiosaur. Because, of course, the plesiosaur is the positive outcome, right? I mean, it, it's Absolutely definitely the coolest. Is. Well, that would be way more fun, wouldn't it? <laughs> we all want it to be a plesiosaur. That is true. My first point. You may all be asking, Brian, how in the world could there still be a plesiosaur running around? And by running, I mean swimming. You look through the, the lens of history, and you think, hey, these creatures have been dead a long time, right? But there have been some creatures previously thought to be dead a long time that have been rediscovered and are now common knowledge to be swimming around the ocean. Example number one, the coelacanth. I love the coelacanth. For those of you who don't know, it is a large bony fish that was thought to have gone extinct around the same time as the dinosaurs. But the, some fishermen pulled one of these up rediscovered, like finding a living plesiosaur, essentially the same thing. And I'll add to that, uh, you know, because even from folks from my camp who believe that plesiosaurs likely died a very, very, very long time ago, I, I will admit that the prospect of a living plesiosaur, I would say it's improbable, but it's not impossible. And I should clarify too, 
If you haven't watched our previous videos, I am a young earth creationist, so I do believe that man has walked alongside dinosaurs, swam alongside dinosaurs such as the plesiosaur. And I am an old earth creationist. Is that a thing? That's Whatever. a thing. That's All a right. Thing. So I think, like I said, plesiosaur, unlikely possible. Point number two. We all know the most famous plesiosaur in existence, the Loch Ness Monster, correct? <laughs> <laughs> all right, keep, no, keep going, keep going. All right, I will. Again, this is another one we will be doing a deep dive on. This is the most famous example of a, ple of a plesiosaur sighting, supposedly, right? So there's sightings of this creature going back centuries, which again gives credibility to the idea that there are plesiosaurs potentially. Point number three, the oceans are still about 80-ish percent unexplored. So who knows what's swimming around in the depths of the ocean? Maybe plesiosaurs, maybe megalodons, another good episode. So all kinds of interesting things that we have no idea what's swimming around. So, so it sounds like what you're saying here is it is plausible for something like a plesiosaur to still be floating around for people to find it. Do I get you correct? Absolutely. Okay. So let me add to that to get specific to the Zuyomaro here. First of all, let's just look at those pictures, right? Like, I remember when I first saw the pictures, I was like, that's obviously a plesiosaur. What are we even talking yeah. about? It looks so much like one. Yeah, you have the head shape, you have the, the sort of long neck, you have the flippers. I mean, if I were to picture a plesiosaur that's been dead for a very long time, it's going to look exactly like those photos. And finally, there's the sketch that Mr. Yano made. Now, again, Mr. Yano isn't a marine biologist per se, but he had some training in that regard. And it's clear he was doing the best he could given the circumstances. That sketch that he made does not look at all like a shark. It has, if you look at the number of vertebrae, the shape of the skull, that looks a heck of a lot like a plesiosaur, nothing like a shark. Another point for this, when you look at the pictures, what's one very prominent feature on a shark? A dorsal fin. That is one thing in the pictures when you look at it that seems to be missing. And there's also just the size of this thing. The, the Zuyomaru creature, was 31 feet long. And that's after it had been in the ocean for probably months and it was badly decomposed. So we can only assume that this creature, when it was alive, was absolutely gigantic. We've already, just by its size, eliminated most of the known creatures in the ocean. All right, now let's uh, be lame and do the points against. Uh, first off, I want to get to that sketch that Mr. Yano made. Now, I will say, again, when I first learned about this, I was really convinced that this was probably a plesiosaur, and it was based largely on Mr. Yano's sketch. But what I didn't know at the time was something that I mentioned earlier in this video. He made that sketch a couple months after he did the, uh, the measurements, and he made that sketch based on memory. Human memory can change drastically over that time, especially when Mr. Yano, being just a normal human being, understandably wants this thing to be a plesiosaur now. So it's really plausible that even if Mr. Yano had the best of intentions and was doing his best, that his memory got shifted, as normal human memory does, in that his sketch looks more plesiosaur-like than it was in real life. Point number two. Even if we grant that this thing looks a heck of a lot like a plesiosaur, uh, when you really look at the specifics, it doesn't match up. First of all, there's the depth of the chest. The depth of the chest is really inconsistent with any known plesiosaur and is more similar to known sharks. Also, the number of bones in the spinal column is not consistent with any known plesiosaur. Now, of course, you could counter and say, well, maybe this is an undiscovered type of plesiosaur. And again, that is plausible, but the fact that it's not consistent with any known one does make it less likely. Finally, there's the samples that were taken of the creature. Like I already mentioned, Mr. Yano, in what little time he had, was doing his best to gather whatever information he could. So he took measurements and he took samples of some of like the more fibrous tissue of the body. These samples were later analyzed. The conclusion was pretty clear. They can't say definitively 100% what it is, but here's what they can say. The samples were absolutely consistent with a shark specifically with a basking shark. 
and they were completely inconsistent with any other known animal. Just another point with it being a possible basking shark. When you see dead basking sharks, the first thing that falls off on a basking shark is their lower jaw, which just leaves the vertebrae and then the little the skull on top, which again can look like a plesiosaur, potentially. Adding to that, th there are a lot of reasons to believe that the basking shark is a good candidate. It's the right size. Basking sharks are enormous. They've been measured over 40 feet long. They're the second largest known fish in the ocean. Second, they're extremely rare. Finding them is something that should shock us all because they don't come up very often. Three, like you said, Brian, it's a known phenomenon that when basking sharks die, the two parts of their body that decompose and fall off first are the lower part of their jaw and the lower part of their tail. Look at a picture of a basking shark, take away the jaw, take away the tail, you're left with something that looks a heck of a lot like a plesiosaur. And one final point is that this area of the ocean, again, about 30 miles off the coast of New Zealand, is a place where basking sharks are known to be. So now let's get to conclusions. As much as I would love this to be a plesiosaur, again, I read books about this as a kid. I was convinced it was a plesiosaur. I thought it was the coolest thing. As much as I would love that to be the case, I think the evidence is pretty overwhelming that it was a basking shark. The tissue samples are completely consistent with the basking shark, inconsistent with anything else. Basking sharks are the right size. They are known to be in the area. And when they decompose, it's well established that they decompose in a way that looks pretty much exactly like the corpse that was found by the Zuyomara. So when you add that together, I think it's overwhelmingly likely that this thing was a basking shark. Okay, Brian, how about you? Any, any hope for the plesiosaur camp? You know, I love, and I usually think that most things are dinosaurs when they come across as a dinosaur. Previous episode, the Suresh, totally think it was a dinosaur. However, in this case, this might be one of the few times on this show that you and I will agree. Mm. But I also think it was a basking shark. Mm. I do. I do. Oh, I really man. Do. What it comes down to is, like you said, that tissue sample. If it kind of points to a basking shark, maybe it is a basking shark. And two, when you do look at skeletons of basking sharks without their lower jaw, it looks pretty much exactly like a plesiosaur. So... I would say it's a basking shark, too. Can I tell you, Brian, you know I'm usually a stick in the mud, and I usually <laughs> reject the cool conclusion here. Yep. But part of me was hoping, like, maybe maybe Brian dug up something, and he can convince me otherwise it's a plesiosaur. But but if you agree, I think that's about all she wrote. I did, I did my digging. <laughs> I did my digging. And I was like, it seems like it's pointing at a basking shark. Let me put a positive spin here. It's tempting to think that the basking shark is sort of the, the boring answer. But let me remind you all, basking sharks are amazing. Again, second largest known fish in the ocean, can grow over 40 feet long, gigantic jaws. If you see this thing swimming in the ocean, you're absolutely going to think it's a sea monster. So I say it is a sea monster. Yeah. So the, the Zuyomaru... Absolutely caught a sea monster. It's just the sea monster is a creature we already knew as the basking shark. Thank you all so much for watching the video. If you could, uh, please like and subscribe. It's a great way to show your support for the show. We are a new channel, so we really appreciate any of that support. And again, I am very open-minded to this. So if any of you have any evidence that Matt or I missed, please leave it in the comments. I would be happy to be taken over to your side.